Okay, so we need to get started. I have a lot to share with you. Um, and if you will go ahead and just get on your computers to my presentation, um, there are a lot of links to click and explore as we're kind of going through it. So I am Mary Lee, and I'm from the Denver Academy of Torah in Colorado. And I have been teaching there for two years. And my first year there, I was teaching third grade, and that was the year that Better Lesson um, was working with us. And um, I can say that in that year, I learned more than I did in the entire 30 years of teaching that I've, had, I've done. Um, it was really a great experience for me. So what I want to do today is kind of retrace that journey that I, I took with Better Lesson and um, tell you about how I kind of went through the process. And um, what, have, what I did was Better Lesson helped me to like look at the gap between what, what learning looked like in my classroom and what I wanted it to look like. And then to help me come up with some ideas and things to try to make it look more like I wanted it to look. And then we would come back together and talk about how did that work, what were some of the problems that you saw, and I would reflect on that, and then we would think about ways to make it better, and then I would go back and try that. And so, it was really about um, what I learned more about it from my journey than anything else was this uh, reflecting. I think it was so valuable. And I hadn't really done that before. I'd been teaching for 30 years, and of course, every day, how did that go? Oh, you know, that didn't go so well. But I didn't really develop that. And that's what really um, Better Lesson taught me, and that's the, what I'm still doing. So that was two years ago that I did that, the journey with Better Lesson, and I'm still doing that uh, method of reflecting and how can I make this better, what can I change. It's uh, been a very valuable tool for me. So um, now what I'm asking myself is, uh, where do I go from here? And I'm still using um, the, that method of re reflection. And what I want to do is talk about a little bit about gamification at the end of the presentation, because I haven't tried that yet. But that's what I want to try, um, try, try next year. And I've done a lot of research about it. And I'm going to see if that actually ties everything together that I have learned from Better Lesson up to this point. So when I started, I started with that reflecting and questioning. What, what does my classroom look like now? What does learning and teaching look like in my classroom right now? And, what, and then where do I want it to go? So it was my first year to teach at a Jewish day school. And what I found was that with half the time of teaching, because half the time is Jewish studies and um, the dual language curriculum. And so I had half the time to teach all the subjects in. It was really challenging for me. And so I initially felt like I just had to talk the whole time. <laughs> I just had to, I had to use every moment teaching. Um, and um, I felt like that really wasn't effective. I, I tend to be a more student-centered teacher, and I was having trouble with that in, in the beginning. Um, how do I spend, how do I make time to spend time with groups of students and give them the feedback, the valuable feedback they need? How do I structure my classroom so that third graders are independently working on something while I'm able, so I'm able to do that. 
Um, and I don't, if I'm doing independent work, I don't want that independent work to uh, be busy work. I want it to be something valuable because I only have a limited amount of time to be, be teaching. So I needed to come up with a way to make um, my classroom more student-centered to where they were learning and doing independent studies on their own and I could help the students that really needed it focus on giving them the feedback that they really needed. So I brought that to my Better Lesson coach and she really helped me come up with some ideas and ways to do that. I didn't do this all at once. Um, it was more, okay, what's the first uh, obstacle I need to overcome? And then, okay, here's an idea for that. We'd talk about it. And what I really liked about Better Lesson is she would kind of throw out ideas, but it was really up to me to decide what, what did I need and how could I make it work. And it, it was really directed by me. So I could make it really applicable to my own situation. Um, so the first thing that we started with was goal wheels. And I'm going to talk about each one of these things. And we'll click some links to explore them. Videotaped les lessons, menus, personal learning activities, and challenge activities. So the first one is the goal wheel. And uh, what I wanted was I wanted a way that I could, um, that students would know what they were supposed to be doing. They would know what the goals are and that they could kind of check them off. They would know where they were in this continuum of learning. They would know what they, how far they had come and what they still needed to do. And um, I felt like I was just kind of saying, OK, this is what we're doing today. And it was day by day. And they, they didn't really know what they were supposed to learn in third grade and um, where they were in that process. So we came up with this goal wheel. And if you, um, if you want to quick click on the link there, the um, link up here, you can have a quick peek of it. Um, this is the one that I actually did last year for my fifth grade class. And I taught fifth grade social studies. And whoop. OK. So um, these were cut out and put on the back of the wheel. And each one of these, it tells you the code of what they mean. But then students would uh, bring them to me, and I would use a punch to punch out the, um, the circle as we accomplish those, those goals. And um, it, it was a good way of tracking where we were and what we still had to do. But the thing that, the problems that, as I was reflecting and questioning about that, some of the problems were just, I was still the one setting the goals. The students weren't part of that goal setting process. I was still setting those goals. And really, all the goals were, students were expected to complete all those goals, no matter what level or of ability they were at. And it, seemed, it ended up being um, more of, OK, let's cover this material. Now we all punch together. Cover this material, we all punch together. And I wanted it to be more individualized than that. So that, that, those were some of the problems I experienced. The next um, thing we tried were um, choice activities. And I did that in the form of menus. And the reason I did that was because I wanted students to be able to, I wanted them to be more engaged with the learning. I wanted them to be able to have choice in learning and, and pick what they wanted to do. So I'd, we talked about having menus. And um, the link is actually for one of the earlier um, menus that I did. and when, one of the problems I had with that is that 
some of the lower level readers really weren't able to um, process through that on their own. They needed more examples. They needed um, like expectations out, clearly outlined for them. What was I really looking for? So it didn't. It wasn't as independent as I was hoping it would be. It, they needed more help with that. And so the next thing um, that we did actually built on that um, and kind of worked through some of those issues. But um, I'll let you click on that link um, to explore it because I've got a lot more to talk about. Um, but um, it will, it, what it does is bro breaks up the learning into like the um, like appetizer, main course, and then a dessert, and the students choose different activities that they want to do from each each place. But another problem that I was experiencing with that is it still isn't leveled. It still is all one level, but students are just choosing what they want to do. So the next thing is the student-centered learning, and um, on the student-centered learning, it, I actually did that m more to develop the last idea. Um, I actually created like a slideshow presentations and it walked the students through the lesson step by step. And then they, there were videos included in that um, of instruction. And so if they had any um, questions, it would guide them through that process, guide them through those steps of learning, what do I do next? I, I think the example is a math um, example, but I actually did it with both reading and math. And um, on the math example, like I would have them, there would be a little icon that would tell them that they needed to write things down in their notebook, that it was time to now take notes, it was time to solve these problems, and then the next slide would tell them, would give them the answers to the problems, and so it would walk them through the process step by step, and it, it worked really well to make it more independent so that I could be working with, um, with kids on the side, and um, Still, there were some kids that struggled with the format, but it actually worked well because those were the kids that I took aside and, and they needed the one-on-one, -on -one, they needed a actual direct instruction. And so those were the students that I would work with on the side while the kids that could do it would work through the student-centered learning. Okay, I think I skipped a slide in there somewhere. Um, yeah, the video slide, it was the, I don't know where, let me see, yeah, this one, oh, okay, yeah, that one, okay, um, so the flipped classroom, I didn't actually do flipped classroom to the extent that, that some people do it, um, I was a little bit afraid to try it with third graders, um, but I started out um, with just exploring the internet for videos that aligned to the curriculum that I was teaching. And um, the students had a hard time with that. They, they loved watching the videos, but they didn't know what the videos had to do with the assignment that they were supposed to do afterwards. And so they couldn't link it up. So I needed like specific examples from the curriculum that they were going to be uh, having an assignment from afterwards. And so I found that I needed to do the videos. So initially I was doing videos. A problem I had with that is I could not stand to see myself on camera. <laughs> so after, after trying it a few times, then I created a character. I bought a mask. And um, I taught all my, all my lessons by video <laughs> as this character. And I didn't um, open the link to sharing with you guys because I didn't want everybody playing Mr. Pickle Ticklemeyer. That was my character. 
<laughs> well, um, but I will open it up, up for you. Um, if you want to click on the link, they can get a preview, a little bit of a preview. So did you create the whole um, the set of slides with the, the pictures and the icons, and did you create all that yourself? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, like Mr. Pickle Ticklemeyer, he, that was his name. And he, he was a Mr. Pickle because he had a big nose, like a dill pick, pickle. And actually, by, it took a few times and the kids actually started to figure it out. First, they were saying, where did you find this guy? <laughs> and then, uh, but there was one little girl that, that never did. And one time I took her aside because she wasn't understanding the borrowing and uh, subtraction. And I was going to, I said, no, you need to um, sit here with me. I want to show you what, where you're going wrong on this. And she was leery to sit with me. And um, she was kind of okay, like, because she was confident she was doing it correctly. And, um, and then I was showing her and she said, Mrs. Lee, that's not the way Mr. Pickle Ticklemeyer does it. And, and she's like, she said, have you even watched his videos? <laughs> so. Uh, Did you ever tell him to explain to you? The, towards the end of the year, we had a like, dress up like who you want to be. And I came to class dressed up like Mr. Pickle. <laughs> tickle my hair, so okay so also like for challenging learners is for uh, math I did this for math because I I had um, a lot of students who I would always do a pretest before a unit and I would have some students that would test out of the entire unit they knew the material already they didn't need to go through the process and um, and learn all that um, again, or you know, just kind of sit there bored where well everybody else was learning it. So um, I thought, how am I going to challenge these learners? They need to, you know, be brought further. They need to, they need to be learning in this time. And so um, I did the, um, I did these. What it's they're called uh, jump club. They, if they passed a certain part of the lesson by lesson, if they passed a certain lesson, um, then they would be in the jump club. That, and if you want to click on that link, we won't go through this because it's 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 quite detailed. But just to get give you a peek at it, um, let's see the third slide. This tells, this is also where you punch out things, but these are different options that they could have, that they could do that. This is where they would put their name and what le lesson they were testing out of. And then they had these different options that they could do. And this slideshow actually not only explains what those options are, but it actually gives examples or links, links to the links that um, will tell you what y they can do. And so it's it's step by step um, goes through each process, each thing. And so the kids not only um, have options, but they know what those are supposed to look like when they're done. They have examples of it. Um, but when we were doing that, I found out some of the problems. Um, some of the problems with it is that some of these activities are partner activities, and so two people would have to be in the jump club at the same time, and it would need to be somebody that they would enjoy working with, you know. And so that didn't always happen. And then also some of them are like extended activities. They take a while to do, and if they were only in the jump club for, let's say, one lesson out of a unit, um, they would not be able to finish the activity. So um, what I did was open it up so that for the whole year they could go back to that activity. 
But I also had a problem with the fact that they always wanted to do math computer games all the time. That's what they wanted to do. And so I ended up saying you have to get everything punched before you can go back and do the activity again. So they had to try different options. So, okay, so now at the, after I did all that, then I asked myself, well, is this working? What are some of the problems? Um, what, you know, what can I do to improve on? I'm reflecting on that. And that, again, was a very valuable process for me. Um, what I found when I asked myself that is that students were still not really setting personalized goals. Um, students were given choices, but they weren't really leveled choices. And there was no real method of keeping students on target. Some of the activities kids would spend a long, long time doing. Um, and they, they, weren't, uh, they wouldn't progress as quickly as I, I wanted them to. There was no real way of doing that. So those are still things that I wanted to focus on. And this was after my whole Better Lesson journey. The whole year was over. So um, I worked on it throughout the, ne the next year, last year. And I was doing a lot of research on gamification. And I really think that gamification is going to be something that I need to kind of answer the rest of those questions as I go into my next year. So I've done some planning. You know, I've kind of tried to put things together. And I'm not going to do the full extent of gamification because I'm just getting into it. Um, but what gamification is is when you take all the elements of like playing video games and you kind of incorporate that into the learning. So it kind of engages and motivates learners. And so here's the steps that I've come up with that I'm going to follow as I put together my lessons for the next year. Um, first, decide on what standards or what I want to accomplish. Then go through that um, material and decide what the first unit, the first level is going to be. And um, gather all the resources I can about that topic, whatever that topic is. And use the internet, you know, the curriculum itself, anything I have, I'm going to gather it, put it together. And then I'm going to separate it into two different piles. One, the, what I really, really want the kids to do, the basics of it, and then anything extra. OK, and then um, I'm going to think through, think of like a storyline that relates to the topic that I'm doing. If you want to click on that link, we'll just look at that. So the first, this is the land we call home because I teach fourth grade. So I'm going to be teaching Colorado history. Um, so the land we call home is the first uh, unit in Colorado history. Uh, ne next slide. So this is the story um, that I came up with related to um, the lessons I'm going to teach. A group of settlers have heard the, that silver is found in Colorado. They plan to bring their families and settle here. They hope to try their luck at finding silver of their own. Unfortunately, they don't know anything about Colorado, so the journey will be very difficult. They're looking to hire a team of map makers to make a three-dimensional map for them. They want the map to show the locations of the five regions of Colorado. And these are things that they need to learn in the first unit. They're also looking to hire team members who can work together to provide them with a written report explaining where the best places to settle in Colorado are located. If you are chosen, your team will complete the mission must complete the mission in four weeks. So I, I made sure I put down a time so that they're not spending forever on it. OK. And OK. So the next step is to come up with an avatar that they can be as they're going through this journey of, of learning. And so these are all map makers. But they choose the map maker they want to be. Next one. And then you put together the actual scenario of learning. 
um, the, the mission is actually the objective that you want to accomplish. And then each thing in the, um, the mission, if it solo is if you're doing it by yourself, house is if we're doing it as a class, and then there's duo if you're doing it with a partner. And this is just XP is the points that they earn. This is the minimum points that they earn, but they can do extra above and beyond that. So um, this is how much is actually available. So it's, it's a great way to, um, to work through that because it's giving kids, those that aren't as motivated um, are motivated by the point system, but they can still, you know, if they're slower to work or slower to accomplish something, they can, I think it's gonna work because they will be able to um, progress kind of at their own rate and the, the, even though they're, they're doing less, they're doing everything from my pile of things that they really need to do. So the next step is to, um, at the end of all of that, then we wrap up the mission by a story at the ending, and that has a final activity on it, and the final activity can actually be used as um, the assessment at the end of the unit. When they do that activity, it's showing that they have understood all the elements that they've learned throughout the lesson. And then aligning it um, with grades, so the XP points, have to align in some way with, with the grading system. So a certain amount of points, and if they do what they, you know, even the minimum, if they end up with just the minimum and have progressed through the lesson, then that would be, you know, a, a certain, equate to a certain grade level or grade point system. And then A would be if they, you know, went above and beyond what they needed to and accomplished everything. And then the last thing is to make sure that you have badges, sticker cards, a leaderboard posted in your classroom. And also what I plan to do is like actually um, uh, have a time where those awards are passed out so they're honored for them. Um, and I'm hoping that that's going to increase, increase engagement and then We'll go through this real fast because this is um, what gamification is, I think, going to do is it's going to help them set personalized learning goals because they're choosing what they're going to do. Okay, and then um, it's going to differentiate um, the personalized learning because they are, um, the activities are actually leveled, so, and the basic activities are are the lowest XP that they can go for. So if they're doing those basic activities, then they're at the lower, the lower level, but it, <laughs> they can go beyond that and choose to go beyond that. And then um, monitoring and tracking, because they have the sticker cards, the leaderboard, the, all the badges and things they can earn. So they're tracking their progress. So not by the punch card, but by a different way of, of doing that. And then also I think it's really going to motivate them and engage them because they're, they're already um, really into like technology and that's all they want to do. And so they'll have that point, but it will, they'll also be motivated by the system of reward. Um, all of the resources that I have throughout here are, are for you, here for you to explore. Um, all of the links, you can explore them, and then I'll try to open up anything that's not <laughs> already opened. I was going to have a question board, but I practiced this with my husband, and I knew I was going to take every last second of time. <laughs> so I, I hope if you have any questions, you can find me, and I'm happy to answer. we got a couple yeah. of minutes while the I'll check on the other phone, but yeah, we can take a question. Okay. For sure. Mary Lee, when did you do all the reflections? Because obviously there are a lot of reflections here, and did you do it after work? Do you teach one class? I mean, it's like morning. What is your schedule? Um, I taught 
this year that I did this, I taught uh, two sections of third grade. So we had a really large uh, third grade class, so it was broken in half. And while I was teaching uh, third grade to half of the class, um, the Hebrew teacher was teaching it to, uh, to that, the other half, and then we flip-flopped. Um, the reflection is just kind of done as I go, um, as I was doing things and trying them and then thinking, how did that work? Oh, that wasn't so successful. What do I need to do to change it? And my better lesson coach was so helpful with that. Yes? You started out by talking about some of the challenges of the time on task because you had half time. And how did the gamification, which looks so amazing, did that change how much time it took you in planning the unit, which will now be four weeks, and did you already do all the subsequent work? I have not done gamification yet. But, but do you only do that one unit so far, right? You made that. The yeah, yeah, I just did that over the summer. I was uh, getting ready for next year. So the investment of your time, did it change from what you did the year before in order to, even before you got um, I don't think initially um, the investment of my time is going to, uh, I think I'm still going to have to invest quite a bit of time to put together those, those units and stuff. But I think after that, I think it's going to free me up in the classroom so that I can um, give kids the feedback they need and the help that they need. Um, and also, I'll have it you know, ready to go for future years as long as I stay in the same grade. So, <laughs> any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you.